Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to listen to me. I know that this is a, a talk about community, somehow a bit shifted from all the technical stuff. So we're going to see another aspect of what the community is all about. And uh, I want to talk about team building, the Django community strategies for collaboration. So this is me, I'm Sam Scalo. I'm the founder and CTO of a startup in Nigeria called Ashport. We're into software development. We work mostly with Django, you know, back-end engineering and stuff. I'm also a board member of the Python Nigeria community. And out of my own passion for community building and development, I started something we call Python Abia. So I'm based in Abia State in Nigeria. So some of the things I'm going to be sharing with you are some of the things we have used to build a thriving community of Python and Django developed back in Abia State. So opening thoughts, Django's success uh, has always relied on the collective effort of its contributors and effective collaboration is the cornerstone of that success. By combining our skills, experiences, and perspectives, we can tackle complex challenges, innovate faster, and build robust, high-quality solutions. So part of what makes Django great is that it's open source, and there's so many persons work on it. The contributors, everybody bringing so many ideas, and we're able to manage all of this together to have such a wonderful software that we're using today to build so many applications. And if uh, Django is able to survive as a result of teamwork and collaboration, then teamwork and collaboration is something we must look into seriously as individuals, because collaboration is at the center of every successful project. The reasons for forming themes is to foster collaboration. However, getting people to collaborate requires more than just putting them into a theme. You will agree with me on this that it takes more than just being in a team to collaborate. So there are some factors that we're going to look at that makes our theme successful um, to collaborate better. So I like to think of collaboration in two perspectives, the social collaboration and then the technical collaboration. I look at the social uh, as what makes people people. And then the technical is the skill that they possess. Everybody definitely brings one skill or the other to the table when we're trying to collaborate on a project or a software uh, project, actually. So on social collaboration, we must realize that we are first humans before we became developers or managers or executives, whatever it is we do you know, in our day-to-day -day job. So that human aspect of who we are is very, very important because most teams and communities at large fail not as a result of lack of technical expertise, but as a result of lack of social collaboration. So when people come together, irrespective of their skill set, they can bond, they can really form that cohesion that is needed if the social collaboration aspect is not taken into serious consideration. So um, here are just uh, what I think technical collaboration is about is mainly uh, bringing together skills to solve technical problems. Usually, we're building a project. We're providing help with an existing project. I believe at some point, each and every one of us have been involved in one project or the other. And we've also seen half the standard experience of working in teams. So some of uh, what I'm going to discuss are strategies uh, just some general stuff that you may have heard about, and then I'm going to show you how we use it in uh, Python Abia to build a Python and a Django community that's actually um, thriving. So the strategies is there has to be diversity and inclusivity. Um, if you take a look at me, you'll see that uh, I, I, I dressed with my Christmas clothes just for this occasion. Yeah, so that's... Um, that's because it's a special occasion for me, and I also wanted to 
put the diversity on the phone to where I wanted to, to look at me and say, okay, this guy is different, right? So that's, that's, that, uh, that's what I was going for. I hope I, I did well on that. And uh, now, diversity brings together individuals with unique backgrounds. Okay, we could all have come from the same backgrounds. There has to be unique things that make us unique. Then there are skills and perspectives leading to more creative problem solving and better decision making. When I bring my own unique experience, my own unique background, my own unique domain, and then we all come together, I think it helps us to have something that actually has a global reach and not made for a particular sect of people. So we must actively work to create an inclusive environment that encourages participation from underrepresented groups. And this is something I know that the Django community is very much known for. And yeah, everyone has to feel welcome and heard if the community or even a team for a project, everyone has to feel heard and welcome for it to work. Then communication and transparency cannot be uh, overemphasized. Clear and open communication is vital for fostering collaboration. Encouraging team members to communicate regularly, share their ideas, and provide constructive feedback can greatly enhance the effectiveness of our project. So if there is communication breakdown, the project definitely breaks down, the team breaks down, and the community breaks down. So com communication uh, must be embraced you know, through multiple communication channels these days. Of course, we are able to function together because we are working with a Discord as a communication channel. Uh, uh, if, if, if we have any problem with that, we might find ourselves a little bit disorganized in one way or the other. So that's the part of communication and how it helps us be inclusive and focus on problem solving. Then if a team must work, then the shared goals and values must be established from the word go. Everyone has to know, because to build a cohesive team is it's essential to establish shared goals and values. By defining a clear vision and purpose for our projects, we can align our efforts and motivate team members. You can't really know how much uh, goals motivate people until you bring them to a theme where they don't share the goals of that team. Or somebody might say, I don't really see myself in this. So he might have the skill, he might have, but because he's not sharing the same passion, he can't thrive in that team. So these are some of the things we must uh, take into consideration. Clearly communicating these goals and values allows everyone to understand their roles and contribution, creating a sense of ownership and commitment within the team. You see, sometimes people get out of things because they feel they're not a part of it. People want to have a sense of ownership in the team, in the community. They want to feel like this is our community, not like this is their community, so we're just a part of it. So everybody has to have a sense of ownership, a sense of belonging. I think a sense of ownership is beyond the sense of belonging. It kind of like makes you a part of not just uh, so, that, so that's what shared goals and values uh, does. And then documentation and mentorship. Documentation plays a critical role in promoting collaboration. Um, if we're going to build projects together, if we're going to work as a team, uh, we can't always be there to tell each other what to do. So well-documented codes, guidelines, and processes help team members understand project structure, standards, and best practices. The mentorship programs can pair experienced contributors with newcomers, providing guidance, support, and uh, encouragement. Of course, um, adopting agile methodologies and iterative development practices can significantly enhance collaboration. When projects are broken into manageable tasks, everybody knows what they're supposed to do, works in progress, review progress regularly, teams can adapt quickly, learn from each other, and course correct if needed. So, um, of course, there's need to always celebrate achievement and recognize contributions in a team and in the community. Acknowledging celebrating achievement within the community is crucial for building team morale and fostering collaboration. Celebrate milestones, highlight success stories, and express gratitude for the contribution made by all team members. So, I wanted to 
show you how this works into the Python Abia story. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm from Aba, Abia State, a small city in Nigeria occupied mostly by business traders and with little or no support for developers, especially Python developers. Uh, I, I would say I, I'm the first Python developer. I didn't research, but I would, I, would, I would call myself the first Python developer from that community because when, when we started, there was virtually nobody interested in Python. So some of the strategies are what helped us to build a thriving community of Python and Django developer. So the first step is providing support. So what we did, we had to invite everyone, include everyone. We started weekly meetups, you know, training beginners every week for five months. We visited schools, printed flyers, encouraged people to come learn Python for free. And so we were trying to really move and uh, incentivize people to pick up uh, programming and begin to learn. And then we started having some turn up. It was a five month intensive training for you know, people who were interested in learning Python. And then uh, I talked about communication and transparency. Um, it's not just enough to invite people. We ensured that there was room for communication. So our weekly meetups, besides just being a training ground, it provided us the opportunity to have an open session where everyone could share their hopes, challenges. Okay, um, you're learning Python, what do you want to get out of Python? And uh, we now began to let them know, with Python you could become a web developer, you could become a, a machine learning engineer, you could build softwares, and so they were, okay, wow. Now I could now see what I can do with what I'm learning. So they were able to bring out their ideas of what they feel they wanted to do and they, they begin to find the answers from, from Python and then from learning Python. So communication was one thing that we seriously emphasized on. Uh, most times uh, when we do, we kind of sit like in a round table and have everybody go around. Yeah, so just express yourself, say something. Don't just hide in the crowd. So people started talking, okay, I think I've, okay, what are the challenges? You started, oh, you started last week. So what did you do on the weekend? So people were just sharing their needs, helped us to monitor and they encourage them to grow. If, if you go back then, the Python is, is a very serious language, but it's, if I we've started exporting talent from that community, some people come to recruit developers right now. Um, when we whipped up the interest, uh, we knew that if interest is not turned into passion over time, it will go down, it will definitely drop. So we had to transform that interest into passion, and that's where goals come in. That's where shared values come in. That's where people have to see themselves in what they They have to see you know, where this is going to take them. They have to see a clear path of, you know, if I do this for two, three, four years, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. So uh, what we did was we, we organized um, some events. We did something we called Data Science Weekend. Uh, we even did a Python day. I know we invited some speakers, had some people, I networked with over Twitter, speak remotely. And uh, so when people, they got a lot of, you know, passion from listening to all these people who have been, uh, you know, doing Python and been doing so well with it. So they felt, okay, wow, so this is really something that will really get me to what I want to, because one of the basic problems that people have is they don't just want to learn something that is not going to be able to meet their needs. So they, they, they want to see how this is going to solve real problems for them, okay? Take care of them, help them make a living. And so seeing the testimonies of other persons who have been doing this was really a great help, and it helped them to, you know, turn those interests into a passion by helping them set their own personal goals of what they're going to achieve. Some of them had goals of, okay, I'm going to be uh, a machine learning engineer. Okay, in five years, I want to learn this, and I want to be able to, you know, 
get a remote job and start to do stuff. So, um, and then we had to graduate into mentorship. As we continued on this process, some people began to, it's just like every week somebody new is joining. So there are new people who need to learn and there are some older people who have been learning for some time. So we have to create a mentorship opportunity, both within and from without the community that we are building. And one of the things we tried to do was to ensure, that's one of the photos um, on PyCon Nigeria 2019. We had to ensure and you know, sponsor some of the people from the community, say so you have to attend. It was held at Abuja, so many miles away from Abia State. So and uh, that was a picture we took with uh, Marlin. Marlin was a uh, cheer person for PyCon Africa at the time. I don't know about now. So, and uh, getting to meet some of these persons, uh, they were so excited. So it's really whipped up more of, and they got to meet, network and have some more people, and they had people they could look up to as mentors who are doing very well, and not just only me, okay? So because at the point it was just like, oh, everybody's looking at Sam, oh, Sam's is doing so great, he's writing Python. I needed to let them also, first, sometimes uh, we wanted to organize the Django Girls, but at the time they said Django Girls was no longer, you know, something being organized. So. It really felt so bad because we wanted to see how we could also push in girls into the community. But uh, good enough, there were girls who were picking up the interest on learning Python. Then I had to, we had to advance into building projects. The first project we tried to build as community was um, a Python library we actually called Akara Ike. You know, we really gave it an Abia name. So, Akaraike simply means password. Okay, that's password, yeah. So, so it's basically a, a library that you could use to generate passwords. Um, if you want your password or just any kind of keys, you want it to be uh, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, special characters. So you could actually choose as you specify in the parameter. Is is on a um, it's on the PyPile, um, so you just did pip install Akarika, and then it's open source on GitHub. I, I think I should have left the GitHub uh, link, so perhaps you could check it. Maybe I'll drop it on the Discord channel later on and then see. So we, we working on this project actually gave some of them a feel and gave them some practical experience to do something that is out there that people you know, are going to use, and yeah, when we put it out in the larger Nigerian community, people were like, oh wow, Abia, you guys are doing so great. And people started using it. I don't know if there's a way to check how many persons are actually using your library, but I think that would have been great. But I've, I, I know personal eyes to use it um, over the years. And then we tried to uh, do an open source um, web application we called Get a Doc. It was going to be an, an open source a platform where people could uh, you know, go get a doctor, get consultation from a doctor, hook up with a doctor. So we plan to do this as both a mobile application and a web application. The back end is powered by Django. It's also open source on GitHub. I think I just put something like the GitHub repo there. Uh, one of the things we also did with this uh, project was um, we, we participated in Hacktoberfest. Uh, you know, we put it as October first during a sponsor, I think, by Digital Ocean. So it was an open, fair, open source season. So we we got members of the communities and other people who were interested in contributing to that project, and then we began to work on that. So building project gave them an experience of what. You know, it was going to be like if they actually began to build. Um, but, and from there, so many of them graduated into working on their own personal projects and uh, uh, doing other things. Some even were able to get a startup and start doing something great from that. So I talked about celebrating wins. So this was one of the members of the community after he he got his T-shirt for participating in Hightower Fest with our uh, Get a Dog. So he, he went on Twitter, he said, today I picked up the 
package as a proceed of my competition to open stores sponsored by doing the 23 version of Hadwafe. And then he mentioned a few names. He was so it was a so we we we, we provide opportunities to celebrate every win, no matter how little. Celebrate wins, no matter how little. Celebrate people's contribution, no matter how little. This is how we keep people interested. This is how we keep people motivated in the team. And what I'm saying applies both to the team and to the community at large. So I'm just kind of like bringing everything together. You just have to now use your mind and know where you have to channel what I'm saying. So but I'm looking at the community because the Python Abia is more like a community as large. And uh, uh, we, when people began to indicate their interest, some wanted to go into web development. Now we began to separate them, okay, start learning Django. This one I want to go into um, AI, so we had some people begin to coach them on machine learning and stuff. And uh, so we, 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 we encourage them to do stuff, to try stuff, and just celebrate whatever you do. Some of them got jobs, they celebrated some of them, you know, and some, so we just have to find a way to celebrate. Sometimes during, at the end of the year, we do an end of, end of the year and also just celebrate and they try to encourage everybody and keep their hope alive. But of course, um, all of this has not been possible without one or two challenges here and there. If, you've, if you know uh, where I talked about there's problems of power, you know, uh, sometimes people, there is no power to, I'm talking about electrical power, so in case you were wondering. <laughs> so um, so you, you have to run on generators sometimes members of the community would just, okay, let's buy fuel, let's complete brood, and then we we'll do this. Uh, there is also the challenge of people not having their own laptop. Like, people have interest to learn, but they don't have, they can't even afford it. So sometimes we we'll try to pair them, okay, two persons are used, and some of them are students, actually. And then, um, there's also this, this challenge of, you know, lack of interest which we experience at the initial stage um, by incentivizing people, you know, some of the events that we do, we make t-shirts, give, give out, so, wow, people like, okay, some just came to wear the t-shirt, you know, so just take some pictures and feel cool, and from there, they say, okay, so this thing could be nice, let me sit down and see how it works. And some of these, there are several, uh, these are just a few I could think of out of the top of my head, uh, but uh, we've been able to walk around some of these things, and we hope to be able to overcome some of these challenges with generally everyone's help, and I know we'll do a lot more. So, thanks for listening to me, um, I'm Sam Scarlo, you can connect with me. I'm Sam Scarlo everywhere, actually, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok. I'm the only Sam Scarlo in the whole world, so that's <laughs> So uh, thank you so much, you can email me, samscarlo at yahoo.com. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Sam. That was a really great talk. So we've got an opportunity for questions now. Um, feel free to go up to the mics, or I think there can be a runner mic. Yes, there is indeed. If you can't get to them, um, we'll go for mic over here. Thank you. Uh, Sam, thank you for the talk. Thank um, you. You mentioned two things that I'm interested in how they play together. So you mentioned agility, and you mentioned, sort of mentioned shared values. So I'm interested to know, as new people join your community, how you evaluate those values or if those values are handed down to new people. Okay. Okay, so, so what we do is um, the, the, the values um, we talked about, there is the um, community standard that we you know, introduce to them, and it's so, okay. If you're going to be a part of this community, we practically just adopted one from the Python website say, so, okay, so this is how the community works. So this is what you, so 
people knew from day one this is the values. And then um, in terms of shared goals, most people who even joined on uh, just came, okay, let's see what's going on here. And so they sat down and we started telling them about Python and what the beautiful things, how you could work with Django, work with uh, uh, AI models and all of that. So it, we kind of helped them to shape goals in the goal aspect. But in the values, they come to meet the values of the community. This is what we stand for. This is what we believe. We actually and practically want to better the community, affect life, and make people see how they can be more than what they are right now. So that's basically what we do. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Over here. Thank you, um, <clears throat> Sams. Thank you. Um, you raised the point about diversity, and here yeah. in Edinburgh, you're an example of bringing diversity into this community because most people here are from not very far away from here. Mm. What does diversity look like in your communities? Because there are also lots of different religions and cultural yeah. and ethnic backgrounds there as well, aren't there? So, okay, yeah, uh, diversity in that area um, comes basically it comes basically in the aspect of underrepresented group. And what I will mean is sometimes as a result of age, okay, there are some people who feel, okay, at this age, I can't really do uh, program, I can't go into tech. So we, we, we try to let them know you have, sometimes we do a special program for such people. Uh, if you listen earlier, I talked about how we wanted to bring girls into the community by doing a Django gear, but then we learned it was no longer possible to hold it, so it was really disappointing. They'll have to look for other means to do that. So uh, it's basically balancing some of the gender and the helping people, it's respective of where you're coming from. We don't, it's basically uh, more of one religion, and it's a small community, so there's much in terms of religion or uh, but we have to balance with gender, age, and then, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's that. That's that. Great, okay. thank you. Have we got anybody else who may be up? Oh, perfect, yes, go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for a very nice talk. Um, I did something similar uh, a bit, uh, but not such, on such a large scale, and one of the biggest problems I've um, seen is the churn, churn, churn rate of people. So a lot of people are interested, a lot of people are coming, but somewhere around 80-90% are fall off as soon as you start facing the problem that you really need to do something yeah. and not just hang around. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you mentioned that um, you've tried to motivate people like with some celebrating uh, even small wins, which is uh, a great way of doing that. Maybe you've seen other ways how to actually try to empower and inspire people for really like keeping all that because mm. this problem I think is probably one of the biggest ones. Yeah, yeah. Just like I said, um, interest must be transformed into passion. It, when people come at first, they're interested. They just said, okay, what's going on here? Oh, this sounds cool. Oh, all these people are nicely dressed. Wow, the food is good. So they said that's just interest. Uh, if it doesn't go beyond that, if you don't, if, if it doesn't give birth to passion, passion is personal, self-motivation. So it's going to die down at the end of the day. So one of the ways you are going to help them to turn their interest into passion is to make sure they set a personal goal for themselves, part of what they are doing. So they're going to say, okay, this thing I'm doing, I'm going to build a website, okay? I'm going to build a website. And then if they also see how building a website helps people celebrate them more, help people recognize them more, help people say, okay, wow, you, you will be surprised how much people value appreciation. Wow, oh, you did great there. Oh, you did that? Wow, that's so cool. That, that keeps people motivated, okay? So, but if you don't do some of these uh, give them some of these emotional vitamins, I would like to call it. So they'll, they'll just, the whole thing dies. I think this is some of the things we tried and practically it worked. Okay. That's great. Yeah, we can take, I think, one other question. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks, Sam, for an amazing talk. It's great. Um, you mentioned some really hard challenges during your talk. 
And uh, I'm sorry, I know if you mentioned this at the beginning because I came in a little bit late, but have you found that uh, other organizations in like the region are recognizing the work that you've been doing there? And if are there ways that you can find some kind of supports in the region or elsewhere? Is, is there anything that we can do here to okay. help solve some of these challenges? Yeah, I, I'm seriously hoping there is something you could do to help because we've not really been able to have any sort of support. Um, so when people usually think of tech, they think of big cities like Abuja, Lagos. So nobody's thinking of Abba in Abia State. So most times our voices are not heard as much as um, we would love for it to be heard. And there's most of what we have done, I will tell you, most times I've had to, you know, from my own personal pocket, try to, you know, help the people. And then some of the members of the community who understood the vision we're trying to have helped. So other than that, I mentioned people not having laptop. I wish I could buy laptops for people, but I, 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 I'm not that great. So but sometimes we just pair them up, say, oh, see what you can do. We even tried uh, sometimes seeing if we can help people lease laptops, maybe rent it for one hour during the training. But when they go back home, what do they do? So I think some of these things affect passion at the end of the day. If you come for a community meetup, like everybody's working and, and you're looking at them, we've had some people drop because of that, actually. So I'm seriously hoping there are some help I can get, and it will help us a lot. Thank you so much for that. Great, yeah. Great thank you. Um, Samson, if there's any links uh, for like calls to action that yeah. people can do, I'm sure if you drop them in the Discord under, Discord under this talk, people will be really interested to engage.